painful anniversary, this Denver family's call for justice after a bus stop shooting. I don't think it would ever be easier, ever, ever again. As a mother, it would never get easier. We take a closer look at the RTD crime hotspots and what changes RTD is making. When you're a property owner, it's not really what you want to see. RVs on fire, the danger caught on camera when RVs line city streets. The city's plan to respond. Plus, a get well soon message goes viral. It was just so uplifting and it made me cry. We meet the Lone Tree Kids behind the bagpipes their neighbor says helped her heal. And as the sun set tonight, tens of thousands in Colorado begin their celebration. The traditions of Ramadan explain. Balloons released into the sky tonight. A Denver family remembering a man taken too soon after a record number of Denver murders. They are far from alone in their grief. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Denver 7 at 10. I'm Jacqueline Allen. And I'm Brian Wang. It's been one year since two men were killed in a drive-by shooting at a Denver RTD bus stop. Denver 7's Rob Harris was at the vigil this evening and Rob, the two men killed in that shooting were actually a part of a historic year of violence in Denver. Yeah, Bayon, so 96 people were killed in Denver in homicides. That's according to data that was analyzed by the Denver Post. And they say that was the most in any year since 1981. So that is why the Tafoya family gathered today to remember D'Angelo and to call for justice and change. It's a sunny, noisy evening at the corner of Alameda and Federal with traffic rushing by like any other day. And that's how the Tafoya family says they want it even though they're here to mourn and remember. It's been a year since D'Angelo Tafoya was shot and killed at this bus stop. He'd be 23 today. I'm just saying, my love. Come on, this way. Oh, she didn't want his mom, no. his baby on, girl, his siblings, and his extended family gather at the spot he was killed, wearing his favorite color. We just want justice, and it, sh it will be served. I believe in the Lord, and, and I have my faith, so it will be served. The family makes it a point to light candles at David Lara's memorial, too. He was shot and killed alongside D'Angelo that day. Two innocent people that just got shot and should be here right now. You know, my granddaughter should be enjoying her dad and my, and my, her, my son should be enjoying his daughter, you know. Angie Tafoya says it'll never be easy to come to this bus stop, but she plans to do it every year from here on out. Every year, every year I'm coming back. Yep. I'm going to keep my son's memory alive. Love you, D'Angelo! Love you! Let me go! Let me go! Now, two men were arrested within minutes of Tafoya and Lara's death that day. They are still in custody and they're awaiting trial. I spoke to Tafoya's mother. He says that, excuse me, she says that she knows that being at that trial will be difficult, but she wants to do it so she can be there to witness justice. Back to you. Oh, that poor woman. All right, thank you, Robin. We want to dig a little deeper into the crimes in and around public transit areas in the Denver Metro. Denver 7's investigative team has spent months looking into catalytic converter thefts. They found a disturbing trend. During the past 12 months, they found thieves walked away with 88 catalytic converters from the RTD park and ride at Boulder's Table Mesa garage alone. They also found catalytic converter thieves have targeted three other RTD park and ride locations dozens of times in just the last couple of years. The Union Station bus terminal has also become a really big hot spot for crime. Drugs and property crimes are rampant there, even a recent shooting. Amid the sharp uptick in crime, Mayor Hancock announced some changes RTD is making. One of the biggest things are new turnstile gates at the entrance. Only those with tickets would be allowed into the concourse area. TV monitors showing security camera feeds will be installed by the end of the year in addition to better lighting around the entire area. RTD hopes all these additions will help keep the people and the area safe. All right, now just go ahead and stop what you're doing and take a look at this video right here. On Thursday, an RV parked in the city's Park Hill caught fire. And it's not the first time something like this has happened in the area. They're raising concerns about the growing number of so-called RV camps in Denver. Denver 7's Patrick Perez has been covering the camps and what the city is doing about them. Cell phone cameras were rolling as an RV caught on fire Thursday in an industrial part of Denver's Northeast Park Hill neighborhood. Man, those guys work fast. This picture shows the aftermath of that destructive fire near the corner of Smith and Forest. 
On Saturday, a sidewalk covered in soot is all that remained. If that fire was just this past Thursday, there was another one several months ago right here on Grape. This nearby resident who did not want to be identified says multiple RVs have been moving into the area in the past two years. I just have been trying to avoid the area because I don't know what is involved with, you know, living out of an RV for, for that long of a time. A quick drive shows a glimpse of the problem. Multiple broken down RVs parked along the streets just feet away from businesses and growing mounds of trash. This is not the first time we've reported on this problem. Back in December, there was another RV fire in this area, this time just a few minutes away on Smith and Quebec. And just last month, business owners in the Ruby Hill area complained about the trash and filth from the RVs there. So when you're a property owner, it's not really what you want to see. The city says it's working with several agencies on enforcement. Neighbors we spoke with off camera say, while it may be unsightly, they just have nowhere else to go. The Department of Housing Stability is working on a safe parking site program that would allow some of these RV owners to park and get connected to services. The request for proposals for that program ended last month, so now the city is working to find out exactly who will manage that site. The soonest one could open is June. We're in Denver. I'm Patrick Perez, Denver 7. All right, thank you, Patrick. A shelter in place order has finally been lifted for a part of Colorado Springs after police and fire crews worked for hours to clear some downed power lines. This was in the area around West Boulder Street and North Walnut Street. Police say a, a bad accident this morning took out several power poles. The driver had to be taken to the hospital. And as crews cleaned up these lines, you can see here neighbors were told stay in your houses and do not touch any doors. These kids from Lone Tree are going viral tonight after surprising their neighbor with a sweet serenade. Nancy Hallwell has been in and out of the hospital for ongoing health issues. And to cheer her up, these siblings in the Colorado Youth Pipe Band put on a performance for Nancy. She says the gift was extra special because bagpipe music reminds her of her late mother. The performance video has gotten hundreds of views and supportive messages. What a great group. All right, tens of thousands of Coloradans celebrate the start of a holy month and their fasting begins. We take you behind the tradition and the meanings. Plus, taking the plunge, Denver 7 hosts a not-so-polar plunge, all for a good cause.